And thank you very much for joining us here on PM Express. Uh, today we have a two-part conversation. The first part, um, we'll talk um, in extent, say it's a bit about this uh, issue that you've you've probably been following, which has to do with the uh, uh, one of our colleagues at CTFM uh, who was assaulted, uh, arrested, and assaulted by armed uh, uh, military officers. Uh, it's generated a whole host of issues tonight. The GJA president himself had yes condemned it, but raised the question of the ethical conduct of the journalists in question. We're going to balance that very shortly for you have a quick conversation on that because I have a, a guest who is very passionate about things such as that. And I'll bring in others uh, who may also join us very shortly. But our main conversation tonight is on this one, the big Galamse uh, debate, how not to lose the renewed war. It's key because there's a lot that is happening here. Um, many say we've lost this before. How do we keep this uh, fight going? Uh, and, and, and stay in it. There's a big debate that is currently happening, right, as the war continues. And I want to show you a video. I want to show you a video uh, right now that, in essence, lays the foundation for this conversation. Then this will become relevant. This is, this is what has been happening in this current phase of the war using the military. I am Lieutenant Colonel Prince Tando, in charge of this team. On the right side of River Ofin, we started our search, locate and destroy. So far, we've destroyed almost about 16 Chanfan machines. And as you can see behind us, we've located two excavators that we are going to destroy. And we'll be here for some time. We have to make sure that we we'll destroy all mining equipment on this river and outside the river. We will ensure that we will fight until all the illegal miners are fresh out from this place. I say we are currently located at Adaboy and so far we have demobilized 35 chamfer machines and six heavy duty machines for Galamse duties. The water that we drink is supposed to be protected. In the ecosystem, we have responsibility to protect it. So we will continue to push hard. At the least opportunity we get, we will hit them hard. Okay, if I'm Honorable John Kenneth Bwedi, Assembly Member, I was a baby in the electoral area. In fact, so we have galamse a juma wa omaga ne ma. A idea a idea ni am pa 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 ye. So si yen suoni e kwa e ni na galamse for the storm. But ni am a lot of we am a community. I always advise them. So be always say juma be a onjai. We say ama en suoni ya say 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 ni eto pia wata ni ano. What I'm saying is that government the whole India must support 100 percent. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, 
I bring you greetings and well wishes from our commander in chief and the president of the nation as well as the military high command they have been following our exploits with keen attention and they have realized the good job that we have done over the past three days when there are no river bodies when there are no forests Ghana cannot exist and so we have a responsibility to protect our national heritage so that new generations will come and inherit it we have to make sure that the state's laws and government policies are enforced not actualized but enforced so what we are doing is enforcement of the laws of the nation and so we are going to continue to make sure that we operate to read all the major rivers of the nation of these illegal mining activities so that the waters can clear and then we we'll have better water to drink and then also we have our forest reserves for posterity so that's uh, uh, just a clip there from the uh, defense uh, ministry there but they in a video i showed it to you because i wanted to see the work that you're doing uh, and, also, and also look at the uh, the other side of it because uh, as they do the work there are concerns that are coming up from mainly small-scale miners about the you saw the destruction of the equipment there um, and in this phase they've deployed air gun ships uh, you know helicopters that are manned of course with high caliber weapons and you're using that uh, to destroy the champans on the river bodies and so I, I got my research desk to pull this up for me this is the the law that uh, those who say um, well, what you do with the equipment once you seize have cited, including the small-scale miners. Section 99, 9 and 10 of the of the of this uh, relevant law talks about the uh, mining equipment. What do you do with it? It says equipment used um, in illegal mining, uh, in essence, is required to be first seized and kept in police custody. That's what it says. And then the minister has 60 days once that hasn't happened, uh, within which to allocate the equipment to a state institution. That is what the law is uh, currently. Uh, but the minister has justified this today to say we are in extraordinary times and so it demands extraordinary measures, including what they're doing. But that's how do you balance the, the question of um, dealing with this illegality, but also following the law. And will the law need changing? Because some have suggested today, in fact, the minority side in parliament said they will back government to amend the law to make it legal to uh, ban and destroy the equipment seized. Now, Operation Halt has, you know, been the the, the the instruction they were given to seize and destroy. They seized several equipments across across the country on this. They, uh, we know that the Ghana National Association of Small uh, Skill Miners have also been raising a lot of issues. They are unhappy about, I mean, the military intervention and the fact that they were destroying. I mean, they back the action they back the fact that you know we have to end illegal mining but they believe that the law still needs to be followed and they're given the seven day uh, ultimatum and government is approaching this using the set criteria that I, you, you see on the screen that the red zone including water bodies and forest reserves no mining must happen there at all so if you find any equipment in these areas they destroy it then the yellow zone this is the 100 meter radius and this itself has become a very thorny issue we heard yesterday the defense minister say they are struggling to, to sort of um, deal with the illegal miners because they go and mine in the evening and during the day they move the equipment back beyond the 100 meter radius and when you come they say but we are within the legally allowed radius and the defense minister is suggesting possibly we need to look at amending this we'll get into that tonight so you saw the video there of the military and we, we this is just a breakdown for you of the, the deployment so far we have 200 armed um, men from the ghana armed forces that went in in phase one and then 400 that had gone in in phase two so they're increasing the numbers and the minister gave an account yesterday to say that they found that the situation the second phase is worse than before so in phase one they found and destroyed six nine excavators nine and it sees one two seven shanfan machine that is the primarily the machine that really destroys the water so pay attention to the numbers here go to phase two 
from nine excavators you're talking about 28 excavators that they've seized and two six seven shanfan machines so huge numbers when it comes to the equipment and they if you look at the cost of an excavator very significant i mean almost half a million um ghana cities to buy one and they have 28 of them destroying the waters that have been destroyed and if you look at the numbers there a total of two three nine four uh, shanfan's gone excavators 37 there now we're going to be looking into this and there are questions of course that the small scale miners are asking that we need to look into how do you deal with this the, the question is about sustainability because we've we've tried this before um why didn't it work and how can this face this new renewed resurgent push how can you sustain this learning from the lessons stay with us um as we delve into this here on pm express <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's a big conversation. It's happening. You've seen the videos and you see the water uh, bodies behind me completely destroyed. We're going to be talking about that. Joining me uh, via Zoom is the Deputy uh, Lands and Natural Resources Minister Designate is uh, George Mirikuduka. Uh, also joining me is the, uh, the uh, Director uh, for the uh, Small Scale Miners Association, uh, who Razak will also join us. Uh, he joins us also there. And in the studio with me is uh, Mr. Kenneth Ashibe. Uh, Mr. Kenneth Ashibe is the convener for the Media Coalition Against Illegal Mining. Very vocal on, on the issues. I will come to the Galamse issue shortly, but at any time when a colleague has, has been assaulted, uh, you, you definitely have to spare some time to talk about it, especially in the wake of all the developing uh, issues surrounding it uh, tonight. Uh, where the journalist now saying, this is a CTFM reporter, uh, Khaled Kuda, now saying that when he was arrested and in the custody of the uh, military at the National Security Secretariat, he was slapped and assaulted several times. Um, and we've seen the uh, Rambo style in which they pursued his, his colleague at CTFM also. Um, Ken, I know you, you had pushed for this. You've actually set up a group um, that you know campaigns or against abuse of journalists. I wonder what, what you what you say about, about this latest incident. For me, I'm not too sure there is any cure for any unethical behavior by any journalist which would call for what national security did. Mm. You know, so we need to state unequivocally that journalism is not So you people are, you, can, you can see the video of the armed officers at the premises of city uh, which is on your screen right now this is uh, was released by uh, the uh, so you see Caleb in the handcuffs um, they're being being walked uh, into onto the premises and they they now in essence looking for the colleague who they suspect had received the video files uh, from from Caleb um, and they wanted to retrieve the phone from this colleague and take it with them or and, and also take and also arrest the colleague so this this is the this is another shot and this is the lady in question this is uh, Zoe uh, and th uh, all this time this was unfolding the you, you should just just see the the the, the just the bravado, the armed, and this is the premises of a media house, right? And you go there with, 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 with such force, so to speak. And you see, and we see, so, so, and we need to really separate this and situate that in terms of who is doing this. This is a group of what national security operatives going to a media house in this manner, as if there was some insurgents in city fm they were going to arrest and all for a video that has been sent to somebody yeah you know so they do this and they drag all of us our names in the mud definitely come the next uh, survey that would be done this would is definitely going to negatively impact upon you know our our ranking as a country of democracy you're going to arrest a lady whose only offense is that she has a video. Yeah. What in this video is of so supreme national security interest 
that we will send you know national security officers to this place arm to the teeth and go in there media house a media house to go and do what you know and if it is said also that Caleb was assaulted slapped yeah that's definitely unfortunate but in fact that's what Caleb himself had said yes that and if that is true assault. that is very unfortunate and this cannot be happening in today's Ghana where well, we've had we've been in this fourth Republican democracy for how many years? And for us to be taken back into the days, you know, before some of us got into journalism. That's when we see this. And all the crime that is supposed to have been committed is that videos have been taken and have been shared. And so who gave them the power? What was was a warrant with which they they, they went they had into no the, warrant the space. that has been established now they just simply had their reporter and they decided let's just go and get it you know because i look at this and i would say to myself that if this was kenneth Ashige as general manager of joy fm or c ct uh, c uh, ceo of multi tv or managing director of graphic and you come into my premise like this I definitely, I, I, well, I'm not too sure I would have behaved like the way Samens and Co would have behaved. Yeah. Because definitely this is not correct. And I think when we do this, we need to let these people know that this is wrong. This cannot be accepted in any democracy. Definitely there will be a cure for if they claim that the gentleman has taken a video and has sent it. And the law will definitely prescribe the ways in which this can be done. Why don't you arrest the person? Why don't you take the person through the full rigors of the law and then let the law take his place? Why do you ascribe to yourself powers of being judge and jury in, in this particular case? And this is what you do to all of us and the whole world is seeing this. This is not... It's just impunity. I mean, and tonight I spoke to the GJA president because since this thing happened, we haven't heard from them. We talked to him on, on Newsnight. And yes, he condemned the nature and way the arrest was, was made, but then also goes ahead to say that uh, the journalist didn't act ethically. And his argument is that he breached the code of conduct of the GJA, the portion that says that you cannot obtain information through dishonest and non-straightforward means. Um, and of course, I put it... And he, ended, he, he, ended, he, he ended the, the, the ethics at that point? In fact, we have the soundbite of him. Let, let's, let's, let's roll it. We've been following with all consuming attention and all absorbing here the incidents which happened at the premises of National Security and also the uh, city FM. Um, number one, we see a palpable breach, palpable ethical breach relative to Article 13 of the GGA Code of Ethics, which dictates that journalists must obtain information, videos, data, photographs, and illustrations only by honest, straightforward, fair, and open means, unless otherwise tampered by public interest considerations. Um, well, you can see clearly that uh, Caleb's attempt or Caleb's attempt to video or take a photograph of happening or whatever he is he, uh, too short of uh, breach this ethical uh, injunction. So this is where we are coming from. Um, as it is a point of lesson from which both sides must learn, the journalists, yes, even though we have all the back students with um, enshrined in Article 162, 163 of the 1992 Constitution, Article 164 imposes national security, national morality, and public order restrictions on the media. So this simply means that uh, any story we get or information we obtain should pass the test of national security, national morality, and public order. Uh, public order. Otherwise, we will step in 
we find ourselves on the wrong side of the law. But, but Mr. Phil Money, uh, the, the concern then is uh, you've quoted um, Article 13, DJ Code of Ethics, on the other hand, also quoted the National 1992 Constitution, amongst others. But the real concern here is that Caleb was filming vehicles parked at the National Security Installation, which is of public interest, which is a story uh, that has been running for some time, or a story that he's working on. How then is he breaching uh, these codes and then the law? Which law exists? Exactly, is he breaching when this story is in public interest? Um, um, I believe uh, you, you are that uh, um, you can't just walk into the seat of government and then take pictures of vehicles parked outside there. A security zone is a security zone, not a playground. So the security intentions will apply at all times. So whether he's, he was taking shots of vehicles or, or he might be able to speak, the area is area was an area is still a security zone. So the law must apply. Um, right, so that's it. Uh, what's what's so, your uh, the question I would want to ask um, the president, TJ president. Of the TJ, is that so which law are we breaching? And even when we have breached laws, when somebody has committed murder. When somebody has committed treason, you know, offenses that are found grave in our country, is this the way to deal with it? So let's take it for granted, granting him that the story was not in the public interest. And so the, um, the particular ethics that he's quoting, 13, granting him that Caleb had flouted it. Is this the way we handle it? And I don't know whether he said more than he had played. Because all I'm hearing him talk about is condemn the act of Caleb. And I would grant even without admitting that he's right. Granted that that is wrong. There should be a cure for what Caleb had done, which by our laws should be, should be applied. So as we speak, the question I would want to ask, what crime has Caleb been charged with? I mean, and, and something joins us now because that, to answer that question. And it's something you've consistent, we lost him. It's, um, it's, uh, we lost something, we lost something there. But, uh, but clearly that, something was clear, um, that um, no law has been breached because there's no law written that says that you, a, a police would have a sign that says don't film here, unless it's written in law. And his argument is that there's an ethical breach. But then there's a, there's a clear caveat, which is all right, which I consistently uh, uh, put to him, that he's filming vehicles which had already been a public interest. The master boss at tonight spoken to us about it. Um, people want to know that covers him. Um, uh, and something, I mean, very briefly, I know this is a matter that um, has engaged your attention, your legal brains. Um, just wrap it up for me in terms of um, where we are tonight, the GJA's intervention in the matter, because you're a journalist yourself, in fact, you are the most recent uh, journalist of the year, and, and how that leaves, where that leaves this particular unfortunate incident. Uh, is there an official statement from the GJA? No, there is not, but we, we were on news tonight when we spoke to him, and he was uh, the president making the point about Caleb's... Yeah, so I, would, I would like to it as his own comment. As, as I told you earlier, I would elevate the code itself over his interpretation of the code because the code clearly has a caveat mm -hmm. that when the public interest is at stake, you can use other means rather than straightforward means to procure the news or information or pictures or videos that you require for the purposes of doing the work as a journalist. And he did make a reference to, um, I think at the 164, uh, there about, uh, there about, we talked about public interest, uh, public interest, morality, and so on and so forth. Uh, that will be used as exceptions and security, as exceptions against what we do. But that actually is in favor of what the journalist has to do. And then, um, you know, the special security thing. And I think we should look at it more clearly and not allow them to get away with murder. If you say you have arrested the guy or you have arrested these two people, my question remains the very simple question. 
What offense have you arrested them for? Mm -hmm. Let them tell the whole world the offense for which they arrested them. And the offense will not be what they feel. But what the law says is an offense. So they should point us simply to the law which they have violated. And number two, we are now getting the details. And I have been sad, I have been angry to learn that Kelly, you know, was made to kneel down and was kicked. He was slapped by not one, but several of the officers slapping him from behind. So what? Even if somebody is presumed to have committed an offense, suspected to have committed an offense, no law allows the security officer to molest them, to slap and assault them the way that uh, Caleb was sitting through under handcuffs. And then they took his phone, the same way they took uh, Zoe's uh, phone, and then accessed the contents of the phone against that? the law. The do law do does that? not allow them to do that. Do you do that? If you take something from me upon arrest, you need to go through a lawful process to access the content. That is, get the warrant from a court. So why are they being so lawless? And we are the section of this society defending and, 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 and justifying this egregious violation of, of rights and constitutional breaches that are occurred. But have we asked the question to national security? The law that sets up national security, does it allow it to operate the police? Yeah, which does is it allow it to get into our home? Big elephant in the room. I mean, it came up at the uh, Ayawaso West Wagon Commission. No, no, beyond it coming up at Ayawaso, the law that sets them up, they are a creation of law. The law that creates them doesn't give them power to conduct arrest. Does it? And that is serious. And I think, and I think beyond all the conversations we are having, there should be sufficient enough pressure. And the president must speak, all of us must speak, members of parliament must speak, because this brutalization of journalists that continues at the hands of national security must stop. Yeah. Just, have, you, have you read this afternoon that uh, somewhere in Asan Gregoire, there was a journalist who saw a group of guys who said they were from national security, who were looting, who were looting a shop, who looted a shop, looting a shop. Is that what national security does? So we, we ought to look at this, this, this more seriously. And I want to end on this note. Emma, let's, let's look at this. What was Caleb doing? He was filming public property. Property can not have been bought with our money, you and I, our yeah. money. And that has been sitting in the week. But guess what? We all start and watch our 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 leaders use our money to buy Galopa Guito. Yeah. And kept them at the Institute of Government, local government studies for over two decades. The cars were rotting away and we sat and watched. I think that that is such an indictment on us generally that we didn't insist, help the, the citizens to insist that our money will not be able to take away. And you won't tell it to watch that to go on again? What is this? Yeah. Something, um, thank you uh, very much. And so that is uh, uh, the latest tonight on this. And I'm pretty sure we haven't heard and seen the last of this. Let me quickly come to my main conversation and uh, my guests uh, apologies on the on the on the on the zoom but i want to go to uh, mirko duka who is a deputy minister for lands and natural resources he's a good friend of the media uh, himself my a very good friend of mine he, he there's no way he, i know he will endorse what we've just been talking about and i'm sure, I'm sure he's uh, patient enough once one of us has been affected um, he knows that uh, there's solidarity across across the board until we had to spend a few more minutes to to talk about this but let's come to that big conversation because I, as we talk right now our very existence as a people are at risk and the military has been doing a few things but of course there are concerns there i want to start with this issue um uh, mr duca do i have you but this 
As you, as you think so. Great, great. I can hear you. So, so first, address for me the biggest conversation that has emerged on this. Um, I, I cited the law which you know Parliament passed uh, recently about what to do with seized mining equipment, and I show the video from the military destroying a lot of the seized mining equipment. I mean, uh, that's just the government position. Uh, how do you justify that against what the law says right now? I mean, what, what is it? What is? How do you balance that? Yes, uh, I believe it's been a concern. Uh, people have raised it. Today, uh, fortunately, we had a regional dialogue in Kumasi, which uh, His Majesty O24 uh, was the guest of honor. Uh, most of the small scale miners asked the same question, you know. But the practical aspect of the whole uh, challenge, and you know, this challenge is a practical challenge that needs a uh, practical solution. Uh, technically, people go out there mining the river bodies, which actually is uncalled for, you know, considering the future of this country and the heritage that we need to protect. Um, unfortunately, some people, when they see the military coming, advancing, they remove parts of these excavators and, uh, and run away uh, with them uh, with the aim of coming back at night to. Uh, reconnect and work with the machines obviously uh, you go with uh, a truck or payload or whatever we call it to get the machine to the destination that the law states but uh, unfortunately uh, because parts are removed by this uh, illegal miners uh, they are unable to uh, you know bring them back to the nearest police station and therefore need to uh, demobilize or decommission it. So it's not, you know, intentional at, at some points because you get to a situation where even the machine is seated on the river, you have no option uh, than to, to get it demobilized or decommissioned. Uh, you have no choice than to do that. So practically, uh, it's been a challenge, but the cooperation has also not been there on the part of the military and sometimes you wouldn't have any option of giving them the chance also for also coming to work at night with the machine okay i mean so ken this is a this is a dilemma i must say though i have my personal position on this is that knowing what has happened before i think seizing and destroying for me it's it's really we don't have any other option the question of what do you do with the law now because the law as it stands I makes it illegal I, you see let me just beyond the position you have made. I'm also, look at the fact that how do you prevent these galamseers from coming back at night to use the equipment to continue to perpetuate yeah. the illegality? And so me, my call to government is that we need to quickly go back into parliament mm -hmm. and amend the law mm -hmm. so that we will not be seen because I have had all the points that were at the presser that was done you know all the justifications that are being done the law the way it is it's done currently now we're using an illegality to cure an illegality but you see if you understand the nature of the challenge we're dealing with it's a crisis time and i think that is why government should quickly go into parliament and pass a law that allows the military from immobilizing these equipment Preventing them from being used to further perpetuate wrong. One of them, when you come to the issues of chamfans, there is no purpose for which a chamfan is made other than an, an illegal activity. Mm -hmm. So we need to treat it in that particular way. Then you have the issues of the excavators and the way these people work. And the way some of us Ghanaians, it's not just the fact that they know that they are coming. They are Ghanaians as informants who will tell these people that they are coming in. Sometimes even people within the national security See, architecture exactly, themselves will tell them that, that are, them exactly. Yeah. So it is important that these equipment are immobilized. And then also, it is also important. You know, when you see a chamfan, when you see an excavator sitting on a river body on the pra, where there's no road being done. What else is that equipment being used for? Apart from destroying, the apart from destroying the environment. So I think that government should accept the fact that at this point, what we need to do 
critically what we need to do is to go back into parliament and then amend the law that allows this to happen it is very important that we do this okay and, and in but fact, it has to be done legally in fact there's some, there's some good news even there because there's, there appears to be there's going to be bipartisan support for what you're suggesting mm. in fact today we spoke to the uh, chairman and mr duke i need to bring you in here we spoke to the uh ranking member rashid purple on the forest lands and forest uh, com uh committee in parliament and he says their side will support an amendment of the law to empower the military to destroy the equipment on site. Will government pursue that? Because parliament is coming back next week or the week after. Is government pursuing, will government pursue that? Are we seeking collective, uh, you know, uh, efforts in this fight? And that's why you've rightly mentioned Honorable Rashid Depo, who was with us in Kumasi uh, this afternoon uh, during the dialogue. Uh, Honorable uh, Collins Dowder was equally there. So uh, we seeking con you know, consensus and uh, we didn't throw anything out. Uh, all, all, all efforts are yeah, but, but the, the, assembled. The, the question, so the obviously, question, if mm. someone is suggesting that, mm -hmm. yeah, go, go, if that, someone that, is suggesting that, we obviously take it on board. No, but, but I, need to, I need a direct answer for you on this. You admit that as it is now, the law makes it illegal to destroy the seize money equipment on site. The law, uh, this is highly debatable because, uh, you know, the law gives a gap as to when a machine that is sitting on a river, how it should be handled. Because yeah. you obviously agree with me that it will be also illegal for a machine to be sitting on the river and retrieving it and you need to uh, retrieve it as early as possible because an agent case and you cannot say you are because of the law and because parts have been removed you allow the machine to be there for them to perpetuate uh, with the illegality so you obviously have to demobilize that machine and get the river saved instantly Yes, that I is mean, why the I, I, think, I think i think that you, you won't find too many people who disagrees with you However, as Mr. Shigbe had said, yes. you have a you have a problem where you have you have written into law the procedure uh, for dealing with such seized equipment, and the procedure, as we have uh, as we have said, says when you seize the equipment, you would have to uh, you know keep it. In fact, it says, and now let, let me just for the avoidance of doubt. Uh, require you first seize it and you you keep it at the, in police custody and then secondly the minister has 60 days within which to allocate the equipment to a state institution right i mean so that, that is what the law says it's as simple as yes. that will you will you pursue an amendment of this in parliament this suggestion is is welcome i mean it's we welcome that so seek amendment to you know, the way bridge where the, the windows. Yeah, but so even the question I'm asking again, as you even throw the law, yeah. so you have this particular excavator sitting on the water body. You are supposed to seize it. You are unable, if you have to seize it, you have to, and the minister has to take possession of it. The minister is unable to take possession of it. Wouldn't the minister then be seen as shaking his responsibility if he allows that excavator to still sit on the water bodies and the next evening is used to further perpetuate uh, this? Mm -hmm. It is the reason why, for me, I think that it's important that we go back and look at the law, amend the law, and take these considerations that we did not take. Because when the law was being done, nobody knew that the ninja crew were going to go around taking out these things and make it difficult for you to be able... Because bear in mind, to be able to even take a payloader into those places will require some great civil works. But, but also, we will then come back again to it. As the state, we should see, be seen to be doing the illegal thing. To be doing the legal illegal thing. thing. So... I think that the solution to this, looking at all the gaps that are in and the challenges that we have, the context in which we're dealing with, is to get this law amended as quickly as possible to empower the military to be able to decommission <coughs> equipment that they cannot really take out quickly, decommission it. And then also, I think that as an engineer, we need to find other means
of dealing with the de decommissioning than what it is that we are seeing the military do, the crude ways of burning and all of that. Okay, and I mean, realistically, what, what are the ways? Oh, I'm pretty sure we could have equipment that can help you cannibalize this equipment mm -hmm. properly so. Some powerful source that you can cut, mm -hmm. some equipment that can let you be able to take them apart and then be, you know, so that you, you can either give it out for scrap or something. Some way, somehow, we need to be able to do that. I under, understand the agency of the situation, but we should not be seen to I think we need to do a bit more heavy mm. lifting, heavy, deep thinking, get this law amended, and find ways in which we can deal with this. Let, let me bring in the small scale miners. Um, hello, Razak. And thank you for uh, joining us. And you, your position has been very clear over the last few days that you don't support the destruction of your the 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 excavators and equipment um, as we have it. You met with you. You were in Kumasi today. You've met with the minister, have you not? Yes, rightly so. Okay, and, and what was the outcome? What was the outcome of that meeting? Um, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I think at in Kumasi today we met, and then we discussed uh, issues concerning our sector, mm -hmm. and we made it clear to the sector minister that yes, as for the uh, destroying of the equipment, we wouldn't have a problem. But as uh, regulators or as industry players, we are being regulated by Minerals Commission. And this Minerals Commission too is a part of government agency who are issuing our licenses. So uh, deploying military to go after this uh, illegal violence, we are in support of it. But the burden of excavators, that is why we have a challenge. Especially our members who are having uh, requested lances and they are doing the right thing. So if it is on the water body, destroying of the equipment on the water body, we don't have any challenge. But to veer off and come to uh, our members who are having, who are using the the, 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 the the right procedure to do their work, and then you go in to bend their excavator, that is where the challenge is. And you uh, you could see that when we went to uh, to Ruprasu, we went to the site exact site that they went and did the damage and so far that is the site that we are complaining about the rest of the uh, excavators no none of them came to us to prove to us that they have lances and they, they went and bent their excavators no mm. but there are two sites they came and they have their requirements that is what we are, we are talking about so from the, the government going out because it's an emergency and we all have to support it for them to fight it Though the way they are going about it, the whole thing, it, it is not the best. But for now, the, the minister and the government is saying it's an agency and uh, they need to find that way to solve that problem. Fine, we are in support of that, that but they shouldn't veer off by going into legal concessions and then destroying their equipment. So, so in this meeting, um, the agreement was what? That um, the, the government will stop uh you know coming to the territory of those of you legally are mining was that an agreement that's very true the minister made it clear to us that the government is not against small scale miners mm -hmm. those who are doing the right thing so far as so far as we are in the remit uh you move away 100 meters away from the uh, river bodies they don't have any problem you are doing things right you are doing the right thing they don't have anything uh, wrong, uh, any, any wrong thing to say. But if you are with, uh, going against the law or the mineral commission, the regulations of the mineral commission, that one will have a problem with you. So anybody who is working within the, his concession and then um, left the buffer, uh, the buffer, buffer zone for uh, his own activities, the government will not have any problem with them. So we all agree that, or he made it clear to us that they are not against mosquito mining and they want to do to work and work responsibly. But those on river bodies and the forest reserves, that one, they are going after that. And we are all in support of that. And we are ready to support government to do all this because we are fed up with this mosquito mining and the illegal mining thing in the country.
Okay. Also, so, um, I, I want to quick, take a quick break, and um, when I return, there's another conversation that the Minister of Defense threw yesterday, that the challenge that the defense, the uh, operators, the military is facing is this 100 meter radius question. And that they've gone there and they found that they, now the legal miners are being pretty smart. They, they go and go and mine with, you know, on the water body and then in the, in the morning they, they move the equipment beyond the 100 meter radius and then they say, listen, I mean I'm beyond 100 meter radius which is what the law says and so leave me alone. And he says we are having a challenge with in, enforcing the, the president's directives. And so he was recommended that law should be looked at again. We'll talk about that when we return. Uh, and look at the other uh, thing that the minister talked about. Some people are now impersonating the military, also harassing people. Um, today, the political angle also emerged in Ashanti region. In fact, on the, on the back of the consultations today, the Ashanti regional minister said, uh, charging his own colleagues to name and shame their government colleagues who are involved in Galamse. The question is, is that a realistic call? And who will really in government point out that his next uh, colleague is doing so? But that needs to happen. How do we do that? One more time we'll talk about that. And so live here on uh, PM Express, uh, I want to quickly bring in um, the uh, Deputy Minister for uh, Lands and Natural Resources. He's a Deputy Minister designate. He's not been vetted yet. I need to add that. Um, Mr. Duca, let me ask you this question about the uh, one of your colleagues, the Ashanti Regional Minister, said today in Ashanti Region uh, that uh, government officials like yourself should name and shame your colleagues who are involved in illegal mining. You support that call? Absolutely so. Uh, you know, the minister himself has reiterated this point, you know, on several uh, platforms that if you believe someone is involved, irrespective of the person's color, political coloration, just come up with it, with evidence, and that place will be ransacked. I mean, it, the machines wouldn't be spread, it would be bent. I have said, also indicated clearly that if you believe Mirkuduka is doing something that is illegal or detrimented or detrimental to, to, to the course of this country, get those machines bent. After all, I, I, they are mine and I have given you the green light to bend them, get them bent. So we are not living in this time yeah. 10. Yeah, Mr. Duka, um, I, I there's, get there's, point. there's a question for you. Yeah. Mr. Duka, I'm just giving one challenge I'm throwing to you. In, uh, Heritage Imperial, yes. they, are mining in, uh, they, ha they are mining in one of the uh, forest reserves. They have a prospecting license, they have a mining lease, but they do not have an EPA permit. They are still in there as we speak. Please, I've named, I've named one of them for you, please go after them they confessed in their own writ when uh, against uh, the uh, multimedia erastus that their mining operation is is legal they cannot be mining at this stage because they do not have an epa permit to do that and, and i have that official from the epa that they do not have it so i'm giving you one of them it would be good for you the the government who's handling this thing to be seen to be dealing with some of these big boys because they are big boys and please, so we would want to see what happens to Heritage Imperial who are mining. Erastus was there, he has footage. And they themselves, in their case that they made in court, said that their mining operation is legal. So that's one of them that I've thrown to you, Honorable Minister Designate. Yes, your, your response Thank to that? you very much. The, the matter will be investigated and you hear, you hear from our friends. Okay. Um, listen, I think this is on a good note to end, but I want to quickly give a quick word to Razak. Razak, on that on that point, oh, we lost Razak because they are they operate. They also say they know a lot of their colleagues who are operating illegally, and and they are not. They haven't mentioned their names yet, but their fear is that these illegal small scale miners are giving them a bad name. And I'm wondering, so why don't you just name them? 
so government can go after them. Um, unfortunately, we've lost them on the line. But Ken, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. I mean, commitments have been made on this. We'll follow up and see. Please if, do. Please. I, I if, think that if you, you should. Think the result. For multimedia, it is you. You have the evidence. Yeah. Because that rate was against one of your own. Yes. And I, I also can share with you when we wrote to EPA formally what they said. What they said to us that they have not given them permits, and so. It is important that we are seen to be dealing with and you see it's important to know that apart from the people who are also on the water bodies there are people who are not on the water bodies but are washing their tailings are going back into, into the water, into the water. Yes. and so all of them would also have to be dealt with well enjoy the rest of your evening uh, this campaign must be won i mean we just hope that political will will be sustained even when we are approaching the elections that's where the critical matter is enjoy the rest of your evening